Hi there, thanks for joining me today. Remember these. Welcome to a little bit of my day. I had a revelation, epiphany. I'm not sure what what the correct word is, uh, or whether I just came to my senses. Um, oh, if you're if you're new here, <laughs> and you uh, have watched some of my old videos, like really old, like from two or three years ago, this sort of thing will look familiar to you. And you know what? I can't find my original ones, and I know I saved them. And do you think I can find them? They're in probably a journal somewhere. Um, so I made a new one, and of course I had to put little Catherine on the cover, and uh, that's okay. So I had this. I'm I'm going to get to work on Carolina. Uh, so we'll we'll talk. We'll work. Um, she has been sealed. Uh, I first sealed her with liquid Mod Podge, and then I sealed her with aerosol Mod Podge, so she's not sticky anymore. And uh, she she feels nice. Um, let me lift her up so you can take a look. She pretty. Anyhow, last week when I sort of unexpectedly took the week off, I just kept finding. I was enjoying working at my desk and I would think, oh, I should turn my camera on. And then I would, I would think, oh, I created more work for myself when I started doing the cute little intros and exits for my videos. And creating those cute little intros and exits although it was fun at first because when you use the canva program and i still stand by canva canva.com c-a-n-v-a.com go over there they've they've got a lot of really awesome free stuff and then you can also pay premium you can also get premium for free for a little while which is nice um anyhow uh I realized that part of the reason why I was sort of going, oh, I don't, I don't feel like turning on my camera, is because when I started doing that intro and uh, and exit the little clips, I literally doubled my time as far as preparing a video to put onto my YouTube channel here because what I would have to do is in my phone edit it go into my movie maker and I would have to join the intro and the exit to the bulk of the video and process that which would take a while and then once that was all processed then I would have to upload that to YouTube and then I could get started on doing what I need to do at YouTube and I realized that I I doubled the time that it takes in order to just simply put up a little bit of my day to share with you because that's what I do when I, I make journals uh, out of old books that are not precious um, they're just in need of new life. And uh, so I, um, I realized <sighs> I, I think I needed to go back to my little card intro because then it's just one thing. Then I just, I just turn on my camera, I record for 30 minutes or so, and then I upload it. And it's easy peasy, apple squeezy. So, um, so I think I've gone back to that and uh, made my life easier and uh, and made uh, and hopefully will have made me not so not dreading turning on my 
my um, camera, but it, it was just, you know, I knew that it was, oh, if I do a video, that's going to take two hours out of my day or at least an hour and a half out of my day that I could be doing artwork. So, so there we go. There's my long story. Anyhow, these little books are from 1903. They were wonderfully made. The, um, the hinges are so lovely and strong. I partially think it's because I don't think they really got used. I think I th part of me thinks they were on a shelf somewhere, but on the other hand, usually books that just sit on a shelf and never get used, usually the spine is faded from the cover and the back. And that wasn't the case with these little books, so I'm not sure. Um, I, I guess the publisher just used good quality um, materials and techniques because even the little spines were in lovely condition. In fact, I probably didn't need to do anything, but just to be on the safe side, because I do think they probably would have been fine on their own, I did use some contractor's tape here on the hinges just to be on the safe side. Now, let me show you Nellie. Nellie is um, almost completely done. So I, I'm using her as my, um, as my model to finish working on the other three ladies. So, and I just think Nellie looks so lovely. I added some uh, a sort of a tickety thing and a stampy thing to the back. Oh, sorry, she's still got a little dust on her from being in my box uh, to spray her. And uh, so she's got her end papers in, which look pretty. I added some lace and she's got end paper on the back with a bit of lace. I still have more to do, not too much more. These are going to be scantily clad ladies. And um, that's just some, there. There we go, that chips off. That's just some of the Mod Podge from when I painted it on. Um, and there's some sari silk here. So I, I use her to go back and make sure that I have, although they're different in a way because they're different books, um, that they're all the same in that like they all will have a page from this Ready Reckoner from 1955. They all have a page out of um, this a sweet little Bible that I have. I think I rated Corinthians for for the ladies, and uh, they all have an envelope from that new stationery set that I found. That sort of thing. So they all have the same number of pages, and so on. So. Uh, what I'm going to do today, I want to show you Carolina. Maybe she was late for the show because she is the only one. She has a little bit of damage to the bottom of her spine right here. It's barely noticeable. In fact, I didn't notice it until I started taking her apart. And I'm not even sure why that occurred because... At first I thought, oh, I wonder if some little mice got at it, but the it was only the cover and the text block was not nibbled on whatsoever. So what I did, which is a little different than what I usually do, is for these ladies and to treat them all the same, the little tiny bit of lace that's right here I'm going to attach it to the inside cover normally I attach the lace to the new text block that I create I don't attach it to the cover 
but in the case of spines that are falling apart or uh, need some, a little support or in this case there's a little bit of damage and she needs she needs a little bit of extra um, I don't know let's say makeup <laughs> um, we're going to put the lace on there but what that enabled me to do is for all of the little text blocks they're little um, they're little head and foot bands came off nicely. I have them all. So all these little, and they're from 1903, so they're 120 years old. So I, what I was able to do, and maybe you can't see it, but I know it's there. You and I will know it's there. I put the little headbands and foot band back on. So they're back in where they, where they came from. So I will be doing that as well for Miss Cara, Miss Carolina, Carolina. So uh, what I'm going to do is the lace that I'm using for the front and back pages, this roughly lace. What I've done is I get two pieces. Because they are sort of shell-shaped, I take two and I put one in the top and one in the bottom. And I take off, there's um, a bulky part there because it, of course, is ruffled and that will flatten it there we go and that needs to come off there we go and what I'm going to do is just glue them inside and uh, Sorry, I just thought I, we don't need that. So I'm just going to take it off. The less bulk, the better. So there we go. We'll put a little on, little on the top and a little on the bottom. And that will help camouflage Miss Carolina's little little situation happening uh, down below there. Then I'm also going to show you what I did when I put in the sari silk for the ties for these little books. Because they're scantily clad, I'm, I wouldn't say that they're naked, they're nearly naked, but because they're ladies, we're, we're just saying they're scantily clad. Um, they've got a really good pinch to them and I'm expecting that the new owners are going to fill them up with some pretty things and so and because they're used to being quite gussied up for the stage I thought these ladies deserve very pretty bows so um, we're going to use sari silk on them and And I just want to show you what I did with the sari silk to help it also feel a little, a little gathery, a little pretty. My three in one is starting to thicken up. And that's not bad. It's about two thirds empty. I find I can only do the acetone if you add acetone to three in one or Fabri-Tac that kind of clear acetone based glue you can um, get a little bit more life out of it 
by just adding, you know, a tablespoon or two of um, acetone to it. But I find you can really only get away with that once really well and twice if you're desperate. So what I'm doing is I'm just gluing that down. I'm going to give it a little bit of a pinch. So it's almost a little bit ruffly. But not quite, but then it lies flat. And it looks pretty. Now I can't take too long doing that because that's wet up there and we've got to get this one down. There we go. Am I in? I am in. Okay, good. So I hope you're all doing well. We've got a beautiful sunny day here. We've had we had tons of rain yesterday. And I sure hope the areas of my province and Quebec, which is our next door neighbor province, got some of that rain. Because we sure got a lot. It poured, which of course, the fluffy little black and white tyrant who lives with us wasn't all that pleased with, but she's not as bad as Dot was. Oh my goodness, Dot would just be disgusted with rain and she'd hold it as long as she could before finally venturing out into the rain. There we go. Okay, so we will let those dry. Let's take a look. See, that really helps. Yep. Now, um, for the sorry silk, it needs to go down before the end papers go down because you want it underneath. So what I do, this is just a little six inch ruler. So I basically estimate the middle, find three inches and draw a line. <laughs> Broke my pencil. Oh, don't be doing that on me. There. And I do the same thing over here. Just needs to be mostly approximate. There we go. And then three and one again because we will be using... Oh, I'm going to hold off on that first. Sometimes with sari silk... All the time with sari silk... <laughs> There are threads, and sometimes some of them just have to be dealt with. There's no not dealing with the threads. And sometimes it's as simple as just trimming it off. Because the whole point, the whole reason why we like sari silk is so that they, because they look really... pretty and yet grungy all at the same time. And that's certainly why I like them. Okay, so that's good. Um, then what I do is I usually look and see which end looks grungier. This end looks grungier. I want the grungy end to be um, to be the end that's the tie end, and I'll take a few more threads off of it. So. That's, 
that's the end there. So here, this end here, I'll show you what I do. And I'm going to need my bigger silicone makeup brush. I didn't I didn't peel it the last time I used it. And this is the best part. It's like peeling sunburnt skin. Love that. Although I never get sunburnt anymore. Knock on wood because I just don't go out in the sun. I find a shady spot and go look out at, at the sun and go, ah, oh, isn't it nice? <laughs> That's my sunbathing. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is, so approximately the width of my sari silk, I'm going to just go in maybe about inch and a half. I'm not going to put any on the, um, the book cover part, only on the paper. And I'm going to lay that down on there and really press it down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it together. And what that will do is, and then I'm going to push it down really flat. What it does is it gives you a bit of a ruffle where your sari silk meets your cover. And it's just pretty. So just push that down. You can use, um, you know, a sheet of plastic and push on it. You could use your ruler and apply pressure. You could, um, if you had clamps that you trust, use a clamp to push it down. I'm not doing that because I have layered um, papers and things like here. There's layers of papers there. I'm not taking a chance on getting any dents on that. So, and that gives us our little ruffle. And because it's three in one, you have a few minutes to play with it and pull it in a bit push it down some more so it's nice and flat so that when you put your end paper on it, um, it will lie flat, especially if it's a thick end paper. Like this is, I'm using, it's from what's called a book of wrapping paper, but this is, I don't know how you wrap something in this. It's so thick. But... Lucky for me, it's thick because it makes really great end papers and it's pretty. So here we go. We'll do it again for this side. I'll choose which end I think I can grunge up the best. Now, if it's too straight for you, I always use my blade and sort of saw through it, but sometimes even when you use your blade to saw through it, sometimes it's still not grungy enough for my liking. Just pull on it and sort of pull it apart. I'm just going to put this thread in the garbage. Thread like that can be a dangerous thing for a dog or a cat because it can strangle, strangulate their digestive system. If you need to, do some point cutting. Those of you who are hairstylists know this technique because it's very helpful when you're doing a haircut, point cutting. And just go in there and rough that up a bit. 
Little short pieces like that won't bother a dog, but those long pieces, you can, dogs can, dogs and cats can literally die from swallowing a long piece of thread. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. Um, I have put music over there, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my three in one again. About an inch and a half. Lay it down. Pat it in place really well so it's well anchored. And then I'm going to pinch it together. And then I'm going to flatten it out so that you get a nice little ruffle. You know what? You might think, oh, come on. All that work. Well, it just takes a second for one thing. And it makes me happy. <laughs> I know it's there, so it makes me happy. There you go. So then, when it's time, See how there's a little ruffle there? Let's throw that out. We're dealing with glue here and I don't have lids on things. We're living on the edge. There we go. And uh, then we will have a really pretty, really pretty little bow. This side needs to be grunged up a bit more. Let's grunge it up. Just pull on it sideways. And then go in with your point cutting to take away that uh, straight edge. I've seen some people use a wire paint remover brush. I tried that. I didn't have much luck with it. I've seen some people use sandpaper. Um, but I'm happy with that. That looks nice and, and rough. So there we go. That's good. Um, we're going to let Carolina's papers dry. A lot of her, oh, oh I'm going to be looking for that. I have to still put that inside. A, a lot of her signatures are ready to go and have been in the press and all that good stuff. Um, I was able to save... The front pages had a picture of that handsome fellow, and then this really nice um, tissue or glassine. I don't think it's glassine. It doesn't have that feel. I think it's just tissue. And then, of course, there is the 1903. It looks like the original copyright. The first one was 1896. But these books are 1903, so that makes them only 120 years old <laughs> instead of 124. <laughs> I'll take 120. That's still nice. Um, so they're going to be um, almost ready for um, to sew into um, 
a text block. I'm not going to do that on camera. Um, but is that front? That's front. So this will give you a little idea of what we did. So that's a little tacky, but we can still show. Um, see how pretty that looks? And it lies very flat because we mushed it down. Now it's not ready to go because uh, what I did in um, Nelly is I sewed around the edge just for a little extra detail. I know they were supposed to be scantily clad, but there's some things I can't leave alone. And sewing, I find, uh, isn't too straining on my eyes. So I can, I can easily sew around these. And uh, and add that nice little detail. Oh, there we go. Now, how am I for time? 31 minutes. We did it. We did it. I'm going to, uh, although I'm going to say goodbye to you, now, my next thing I'm going to do is I need to make the two nanas bookmark for um, Nelly, and I'm using the same paper that is in her um, end papers. So I've got. To, I'm going to work on that next. But we're at thirty. We're at almost thirty-two minutes here. So. So and you've seen me do this before. So and if you haven't. Look through my history and it will show how I make a two nanas bookmark. Now, of course, if I can only find this, this poor old cutting mat is my favorite. I'd be so sad when it finally dies. Some of these areas I can barely see the lines anymore. I've been drawing, I always like two main lines going north, south, east, west. And I think I'm going to have to re recolor those in but I'm not ready to give it up yet I love I love the size of it I love that it's quarter inch squares and not half inch squares and I love that it's full squares and not polka dots I just love everything about this little cutting mat and I found it at a thrift store I should see if I can still get it at Desera's we don't have one local anymore. The only one we had closed, but I think they still exist and I think they ship. But whether they would ship one tiny little cutting mat, I guess I'll go see. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for joining me on uh, restarting up uh, a little bit of my day. And um, for the time being, we're going to say farewell to the fancy intro and fancy exit. And I'm just going to wish you a good day for the rest of your day. And we'll talk very soon. And, um, and we'll catch, uh, we'll either do Johanna or um, Louise at a different point so that you can see um, how I'm doing that part of it. So, um, so eventually, although it'll be different ladies along the way, you'll eventually be able to see what I did to get all of the books ready. Take care. We'll talk soon. Bye.